discussed uh, um, the nature of uh, random variables. Um, so, uh, so the basic thing is that um, random variables uh, plays a role to define events through them. Um, as we know, a random variable actually is a function uh, from uh, the sample space uh, to uh, the set of real number if, if the random variable uh, is real value. Okay. And so, um, well, and we mentioned that uh, in addition to being a function, a random variable uh, should uh, uh, satisfy uh, a general property. Okay. And so, so what uh, exactly uh, uh, is this general property? So we try to answer this question. Um, so in practice, we like to have that. So because we, we model uh, in our running experiments, um, a random value actually uh, is the output of a measurement device. Okay, and and so um, so if, if the 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 output the value of or the the, the major value x is less than or equal to x, so quite often uh, we we like to have this one as a vector. And, and uh, from our notation, we know that um, uh, this is the same as that um, the, the value is in this uh, ray okay, from uh, minus infinity up to x, including uh, x itself. Okay. And, and, so, and so this is actually uh, it is a subset, as we know that any event is a subset of well, some space, so that uh, if we include all um, sample omega such that uh, uh, if uh, we observe the sample, then the major value uh, will be uh, in this set. Okay. Or by using the inverse mapping notation, uh, we can write uh, the event uh, as this one. So one, two, three, four are uh, four uh, different kind of notation, right? Uh, for the same uh, event. Okay, so we would like that uh, 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 this event. Uh, is an event of interest. That means that uh, this event should be in the collection of, uh, of uh, in, in this sigma algebra uh, for all x in R. Okay. So and and that um, part. So so this is actually uh, the, the so-called sub to subject to a certain general is that. Uh, would require that uh, that uh, this subset is a vector of interest. Okay, so we must ask that uh, uh, this event uh, is actually in, in the sigma x by. Any questions? So if uh, if you find a mapping a mapping from the sum space to the set of real numbers such that. Uh, uh, sum of x for sum of x that uh, uh, this subset is not in f then, then x is not a wrong value right and because that uh, this event uh, is of is the event of interest so that uh, we can apply the the probability function and uh, the open bound we get the probability that uh, this event occurs um, and uh, we denote because that uh, it, it depends on the equal x here so we actually we create a, a numerical function here okay for each little x uh, we have a probability and, and this function is called the probability distinct function we encounter the in elementary probability Okay, so so that um, so it's quite natural that uh, uh, as we mentioned here that uh, uh, this subset should be an event of interest. Okay, and because that is an event of interest, so we can apply the probability measure, probability function on it, and so so that we can so for every random variables we have uh, uh, a corresponding probability distinct function. Okay, so it is a whole set. Okay, 
and they, they are connected together. Any questions? Okay. No questions. Okay, so now, so now, um, because we require uh, this event, this event, or right, for different little x, different little y, are events of interest. Okay, and uh, and we know that uh, whenever uh, x is less than equal to y, then this event of interest is a subset of this event of interest. Of course, right? Because that this is bigger. So, so this one is a bigger subset. Okay? And so, so that we have a situation that uh, we have pure event of interest. And, uh, and the both of them are in the sigma h by x. So we have so this one, we have this one. Okay. Right? Okay, so this is the thing here. And uh, we can do the, as we know in sigma x bar, we can do complement. We can do um, intersection, we can do union. If the, those operations, if we do it uh, countably, so that uh, then we end up with another event of interest. And, and so, so, so we take the difference of uh, this event to this event. Okay? So basically, as we know, it is, the, it is this event, right? Uh, intersect with the complement of this event. So it intersect with the complement of this event, right? So basically, uh, we have this region. So this region, this region is And uh, so, so, so that um, so this becomes to so this is upset that the only variable is greater than uh, greater than x, but less than equal to y. Okay. Right. So, so this should be an event of interest too, because of, uh, this event, this is an event of interest. This is an event of interest. Okay. Right. And uh, the notation is that the, the, the same, uh, so we can denote this event as the London value uh, belongs to this interval. So this interval uh, is a half open, half curved. Okay. And, and, uh, and the, by the inverse mapping notation, actually it's the inverse mapping uh, of the, the interval. So, so that, um, that if, uh, this is our sample space here. So this is our sample space here. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so if this is the real line, right? And uh, we have x here. So the so, so we have the inverse mapping. Okay. So we, with the inverse mapping, uh, this interval <coughs> is to, to So the inverse mapping of So we can 
we know that uh, that this is the the ray intersect with the complement of this ray and take the inverse. And, and, and so this intersection actually is this half open half cross interval. So because this one is from minus infinity go to here. So this is the, the red. And uh, the complement of this red would be uh, from here the x up to plus the infinity. So their intersection is just this half open half cross interval. Any questions? Okay, so now in general, doing countable remaining operations of union intersection or complement on those events. Okay? Because the basic event uh, we require that uh, uh, this event are events of interest. The thing is that they are events of interest. And, and so when we do the, uh, the complement and the union intersection just as here, like here. So, uh, this is the, the basic uh, 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 ray here and we, we we actually do the um, intersections um, the complement intersection on the union and then um, we we'll result in event uh, okay so, so that um, so the corresponding thing is that uh, the notation here is just give us to do to do the the complement and the intersection for those event of interest is equivalent to to the the complement and the section for for this special kind of race. All right, so the race is from minus infinity up to a certain real numbers. Okay. And then we take the inverse mean. So, so doing uh, the complement or intersection or uh, unions in the sum space, okay? The same as we do uh, the corresponding uh, complement intersection uh, or in our union uh, on the real line. Okay, so they have uh, one one correspondence. So once you get down here, and then you take the inverse matrix of x to get the corresponding matrix. Okay, now, so so the collection of all subset of R here generated by any sequence of countable many operations of union intersection or complement on race. On race. Okay? So the race here. Um, the red R. There are so many that kind of ways, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have a you have a many uh, rays here. Yeah. Okay? And uh, and then for all these rays you do complement because the complement of the rays is comes to it's complement comes to here. Right? So this is the uh, right? So this one is the complement of this special kind of rate. Okay? When you do the complement. And similarly the complement of this one. Uh, 
and you can do complement and then you can do the intersection or union the things uh, and then so you can generate a lot of uh, subset of R okay. right? and then all, you, you collect all this kind of subset together uh, it is actually uh, it's the smallest sigma algebra of subset of R so if you come to all these subsets, when you put them together, it comes to um, a sigma algebra, right? And this is so it is the smallest sigma algebra because in, in any sigma algebra, you can do uh, complement, you can do intersection, you can do union, countable, okay? You can do it. So so you generate all of these things, okay? All right. And, and so this collection will be denoted as B, right? So when you, when you, you generate uh, all this, the subsets of the, of the real line, you, 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 uh, you perform a, a smallest uh, sigma algebra. And as we can see that, uh, in this sigma algebra P, uh, you know all the intervals are in B. OK, so the first interval, the open interval, all half cross, half open intervals, they are all in B. Okay, for example, if uh, uh, how can we get the uh, x1? Um, actually, um, we know to get an interval x1, we can Okay, so if you want to get an interval x1, so x1 actually is the is this open ray intersect with this cross ray right because that uh, oh sorry so it's um, And we know this one is in so it's um, and, uh, it's okay. So this is next, right? And this one is. We already know that this one is in the, the second method of but out of things, right? But how about this one? So we have to show that, so that um, we have to show, so how to show that. Uh, this uh, cross ray is in the sigma angel. Well, so okay. Now we know that. So we have a sequence of open ray to the right. Okay. Now we now um, for 
for all n. Okay? So you know that. This is the dumping value. A little bit uh, longer than uh, so this, this is x here. So this is x minus one third. I'm sorry. Alright. And so smaller and smaller. Okay, and then we take the intersection minus one intersection. Right, so their intersections should be in B yeah, because we take the countable intersection. But what is this? What is the intersection of all these open grades? As n goes infinity. That. So you can see that the intersection is just, but this is just x and the cross ray. The proof is easy. First of all, uh, this cross ray is a subset of each open ray, right? Because that. All this open red will include the cross red. Secondly, um, if you have a, a point to the left of x, then you can find an n bigger than now. So, uh, if, um, so suppose that uh, you have. Will, will not be in this intersection. 
So the only way that exists is that. Then in this session, okay, so we have proved that. So actually, such a cost rate is in here. By using the countable intersection of uh, of uh, um, of, of, of those kind of uh, uh, cross rate to the left. Okay, so so we prove that this is, and so this is in the B. So this one and this one intersect. Of course, another intersection. So of course, this cross interval is. In So basically, you can show that any interval, finite or infinite, any interval are in B, or all up. So any interval is in B here. And uh, so the, the members of B will be called the Borel set uh, in the set of Borel numbers. Members set, they call Borel set. And, uh, and the B is set, the collection of all Borel sets. Uh, it's called the Borel uh, Sigma L Okay. Yes, please. Can we apply the continuity of all building in this case? No, we don't. Because we, we, we do not mention anything about complete function yet. Yeah. <laughs> because the continuity property is about the probability function, the behavior of the function. Here is just the uh, just the set operations only complement uh, union and intersection. Okay, so so basically uh, the Borel-Sig algebra B, the Borel algebra contain all subsets of R, right, which which are interested, we are interested in them. All of the subset of R um, we interest in um, R and B. So it is a very important collection of the subset of R. Okay. And of course, we know uh, all intervals, such as these are finite intervals, we can have infinite interval like the uh, uh, this kind of interval, this kind of interval, or this kind of intervals, they are even, um, so there are four kinds of infinite interval, right? Uh, this kind, this kind, and uh, also uh, this kind, right? One, two, three, four. We have four kinds of uh, infinite intervals. And, uh, and we know this is and we already now show that this is in B, right? Here, we show this kind of interval is in B, so, so it's in, in complement. This complement is also in B. So they are all for your success. So now we can give a conclusion. Um, and an event defined through a random variable x must be of the form. So at the beginning, yeah, the beginning here is that uh, we use the, the the crucial role of random variables is to define band of interest. Okay, so what exactly draws the event of interest that we want to be we want to define through any random variable? Actually, it's, it's here. Is that uh, given a random variable, we always ask that if, if uh, the random variable has value in a Borel set. Okay, and uh, and so so. Those event of interest will be the event of this form. Right? For, for, and B is a Borel subset of the real numbers. So we collect all of them. 
what we denote f of x is the collection of all events if uh, defined as to x. I'm sorry, that, that we put d here. Right? So, so we put all the event defined through x as a collection and, and denote it as f of x because that is in sigma h1. And it consists all events that appear that uh, x is in uh, a various subset. And we call such a sigma entry bar as the implement system about all running experiments observed through x. Okay. And in, in general, this implement system right, of can through x is a sub-collection of all sigma entry bar. So that is the reason why we, we may need to have many, many different kinds of random variables. If we want to know uh, the, the, the sigma h of f. Okay. Right. Right, so, so, so that the, the information system f of x um, about all random experiments observed through x uh, it is the the, 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 the information that uh, uh, can be tell can be told uh, through observing a random variable x and then and then nothing more actually nothing more. any questions so I will ask you to, to prove formally that uh, this information system is, itself is a sigma Okay. Right. An example, um, I suppose that now uh, we have an event uh, in the sigma entropy f, and uh, we define an indicator of this event, i.e. I sub e. So I sub e, uh, I sub e is uh, a random variable. We will show that, okay? And, and so, so indeed, f sub e is a function from the sum space uh, to to r, but actually, uh, its range is zero and one together, right? So it's just just a, a, a subset of the r consists of zero and one, and, and it is very the, the definition of this indicates very 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 simple that uh, if uh, if the outcome is uh, belongs to the event E, then the value is 1. Okay? Otherwise, the value is 0. So that's why it's called indicator. Okay? So it's called indicator. And the, the information system, alright, we can obtain the through the indicator, consider only four events. And we say the total event, the event E itself, as well as its complement. So if we want to want to uh, get information about running experiments through this indicator, we get very few information. Why? Because we have only can can four event of interest. Very little. Okay, very little. But 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 it is very important because it's, it's very specific. Uh, the uh, associated with an event. Okay. So so actually. Uh, to see an event e is the same as to study uh, its indicator. Okay. So in many, many uh, um, um, solutions for many non-experiment prob problems that uh, uh, people usually use the indicator of an event to deal with a lot of things, as you can uh, see uh, from the textbook. And I will use the indicator logs uh, in my uh, And uh, so, um, so what is the so how to prove that? Um, okay. So we know about the 
is the okay. So the information system associated with the integer uh, one uh, e consists of all event of interest, right, of this form. But there are four cases. We can um, give uh, an expressive uh, form for such an event of interest. So uh, this one, um, um, okay. Uh, if, uh, if this subset contains the B, then we know that it's a total event. Okay, okay for you. Because the parcel value for in case 0, 1. Okay, and uh, because 0 is in B, 1 is also in B, so, so any value of 1E is, must contain the in B. So of course it's the total event. Okay? 0, 5, 1. In this case, then we have the company B, the Uh, 
um, of uh, this random variable. Um, so we can just consider a, a special case uh, here. Uh, for example, um, we consider the random variable uh, has uh, a finite possible, finite many, finitely many possible values. And we say that this value are uh, integer from 1 to 3 up to n. So they are n values here. Okay? So, so the value of this random variable can be 1 or 2 or 3 over n. Okay? And so, so now we define some fundamental event, lambda i. So lambda i is the event that uh, the, the random variable is very high. It means that uh, the so associated measurement device okay, is output i. Okay? So that's why. And, and they are called atomic events. Okay, they are called atomic events. Because they, they, they are the most basic event you can have. So and each each number i is not empty because because that uh, because one two three up and up they consist of the range range means that the the set of all possible values okay so that's why that's why number i is not empty okay. now. With the atomic events, we can describe all events of interest in the information system f of x. So we know that uh, in the information system f of x, uh, the event is will be in this form, right? For for for, for an arbitrary uh, real subset. So so this event can be described here. All right, and then it comes to Come to a union of i. I means integers here. Right. Okay, and so because i here, we mean that uh, i is equal to one or two or three up to n. All right. So so it's a union of uh, this event. All right, and uh, and so it's a, a distinct union of lambda i for all integer i to b. If uh, there is no as integer one to up to n in P, then the union is empty union, so it's, a, it's an empty set. Right? And if one, two, three up to n are all in P, then the distribution unit belongs to the total event list. No negative values. So if p is, is, is equal to this interval uh, from negative infinity up to zero, then no value can be in this rate, right? In this interval. So that's why uh, the event is kind of set. Hmm? All right. So in conclusion, uh, for discrete random value. This range is 1, 2, 3, up to n. The information system is just a collection of all possible unions of some of the n atomic events. So we can determine the size of this sigma algebra. The size of the sigma algebra is 2 to the n power. Because that uh, Because any is that So any event of interest observed through 
this is random variable x. This either is the joint union of atomic events. The first atomic event can be here or not, right? So you have two choices. You can put number one here or, or don't put it. So get get right here. Or you can put the uh, number two, not the two. Okay, so you put it here or not, so you have two choices. So each atomic event has two choices. And you have n atomic events, so the possible choice is 2 to the nth power. Okay, so that is the number of uh, event of interest. That is the size of that. Any questions? Yes. Oh, it's just an example. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can uh, actually um, you can consider you, could, you can consider any values. So I say um, x goes to a state. So value one, value two, up to arbitrary value. Well, you want to go up to here, uh, this thing. Okay, no further questions. So I will see you uh, on Friday.